Welcome back to The Producer Podcast. I'm your host, Micah Versman, and on today's episode, we're sitting down with representatives from the Iowa and Oklahoma film offices to discuss working with a film office, grants, incentives, and how all that can benefit your production. So without further ado, let's get started. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Oh, thanks for inviting me. I'm really happy to be here. Thank you for having me. To start, maybe just share a little bit about yourself and how you got started working at the film office. Sure. Well, my name is EJ Philby, and I am a production assistant in the Iowa Film Office, which is called Produce Iowa. I am the assistant to Liz Gilman, who is the executive producer of Produce Iowa. I've been working in the Iowa film industry since I started studying cinema in college, which was at the University of Iowa in Iowa City, of course. Um, So that's been, I don't know, seven or eight years now. Okay. Um, Initially, when I started in college, I got a couple internships with, with some local filmmakers in the state just to see what it was like to be on a set, um, learn a little bit of the ropes. My first internship was not paid because I had so little idea of what I was doing. It was my first semester of even studying cinema, and I thought, well, I really couldn't ask for payment yet because I have no knowledge at all or any understanding of anything. Um, I initially thought I wanted to be a director because I think a lot of us do. And then I decided that I actually wanted to be an assistant director in AD because while working with the talent and the actors is cool, what I really liked doing was that like organizational aspect. I didn't want to make my own movies. I wanted someone to give me their movie and then I would make it happen, mm-hmm. you know? Um, at the time, I was working another part-time job because working in the film industry is freelance And that means sometimes you are super busy and sometimes there's a dry spell. So to keep um, everything really even and making sure I could always pay the bills, I had a part-time job at a a shop in Valley West Mall as well um, that I also kept around just because I enjoyed it. (laughs) Yep. And I was getting to the point where I was deciding how I wanted to move forward in my career. If I really wanted to make the jump to being like production coordinator here in Iowa Um, I was considering if I wanted to move to another state. Um, I wasn't really sure where I wanted to go. And a position with the film office opened up, and I thought that would be absolutely perfect. I could stay here where I already have um, a family and a boyfriend at the time, now husband. (laughs) Um, And I really liked the industry and people in the industry here locally. Moving would require me to start over with all of that networking. And... What's great about working now in the film office is that even though I'm not on set as often as I used to be, I get to still help um, filmmakers make film in our state. And it's kind of that same goal that being an assistant director would have given me, where somebody gives me their project and I help them to make it happen. It's just in an offset way now. Okay. Um, Well, my name is Jeanette Stanton, and I'm the deputy director of the Oklahoma Film and Music Office, and I've been there for seven and a half years. So um, I've certainly seen a lot of growth in Oklahoma since that time. Um, I've enjoyed working there for sure and learned a lot about film and TV. Um, I do not have a film background, oddly enough. Um, so I think I'm the perfect candidate to say anyone can work in this industry on any level, um, and have a great time doing it too. So I'm excited to be part of the office. Yeah. So I am curious, like, since you don't have a film background, like what got you interested in this job? Well, um, so, you know, back in 2000, I believe it was 14, I was searching for a new job, ultimately. Um, I had, and so I came across um, the Department of Tourism. Our office used to be housed at the Department of Tourism. Now we are with the Department of Commerce. Um, And I came across a job posting, quite honestly. 
um, that talked about film in Oklahoma and talked about, you know, they had a website, which I went to and, you know, oddly enough, learned that there were movies happening in Oklahoma, which I had no idea at the time. Um, and the the position that I was brought into met my skill set from previous jobs and my education. So um, if you can believe, we are not making movies <laughs> at the Oklahoma Film and Music Office as a state agency. So um, that was definitely not a requirement to come on board. Um, you know, like anything else, um, the the woman that hired me, you know, you I they can teach you the lingo, they can teach you the needs, they can, you know, with time, they can explain how production works and what's needed and what's important and the questions to ask. And um, like anything else, you you learn it. Um, and so she needed someone to manage a team and, uh, or assist her in managing a team. And um, that was my strong suit my, and my skill set. So here I am. So my next question is like, what, level of filmmaker do you work with do you have to be like doing these million dollar budgets before a film office you know wants to work with you or can you be like a beginning filmmaker and still uh, get help oh yeah you can absolutely be any level <laughs> well well we're here for everybody and we're not going to discriminate um if a multi-million dollar project came in hey that'd be awesome and we would do our best to help them um, if a smaller project comes in, that's still significant, um, mon monetarily, perhaps, I don't know, hundred thousand dollars. That's also really great. And we'll do what we can to help them. Or there might be people saying, Hey, I'm doing my best. I don't have any budget at all because I'm doing it in my free time in my backyard, but my friends and family are helping me out and I'm passionate mm -hmm. and we'll still try to connect you with resources. Um, you could be a student or you could be, um, a really long careered filmmaker as well but either way we're, we're here to help yeah no absolutely not so um you know our office has been around for over 40 years um and it's definitely evolved over time on what we do what we provide you know um who we market to you know all those types of things have definitely evolved but our viewpoint is that we are here to connect, support, and promote any filmmaker on any level. So whether that's local or someone coming in um, to film, make a movie in Oklahoma, um, that's okay. Um, our website offers so many resources all across the board. So you definitely don't have to have, and we help, we help student filmmakers all the way up to, um, you know, really huge productions. Um, coming in town because all the needs are different um, mm -hmm. as you would imagine um, and so we welcome all of it honestly okay uh, so you mentioned working with both uh, in-state filmmakers and out-of-state filmmakers are there differences in either how you're able to help those kind of two groups or um, the way you interact with them um, well, the interaction is the same. We always want to provide great customer service to both um, and always make all our resources available to both. But absolutely, I mean, the questions you get from local are can be quite different from the questions you might get from out-of-state filmmakers because out-of-state filmmakers don't know the resources. They don't know the local crew. They don't know, you know, our production directory. They just, they're just getting started. They're, you know, they're foreign to the state. Whereas a local filmmaker, you know, they may... Um, they may know the crew, they know the cities, they know, you know, they know um, local resources. So it's a little bit probably easier for them to navigate, but um, the questions are definitely, are definitely different for sure. So uh, as I've mentioned, Liz and I are the two people who work in Produce Iowa. And Liz, my boss, does most of the work with people who come from out of state and I'm focused more on the people who are here in state. So the source of where those people are coming from may change a little bit of who you're talking to. Okay. Um, really, there's no difference in terms of what we have to offer. We have the same resources, the same crew, um, the same grant programs, but um, 
it's more of knowing what needs the production will have. If you are coming from out of state, you're going to need lodging, you're going to be going to restaurants, and you, usually they end up wanting to do some sightseeing and shopping along the way too. Right. So we'll tell them, you know, you can find quintessential Iowa merchandise and shots for your film that are very much Iowa in these spots. Here's some places to go see while you're here. Um, you know, we usually tell them, go get a burger at this restaurant downtown while you're here. But we wouldn't necessarily tell a local that because they're, they already know, for one thing, and they're usually doing it in their own town anyway, so they don't need a hotel. They don't need to go out to restaurants. And we know that there are different needs for different types of productions. Um, one big difference in terms of eligibility is we have a green light grant program that we put on with the Iowa Arts Council, our sister division, of course. And you actually have to be a resident of Iowa and you have to be registered in our crew directory that I mentioned a while ago in order to be eligible for that grant. Okay. It is specifically a grant for filmmaking, which is amazing. Um, and in my opinion, I think it's more effective than tax incentives are. I know most states are really accustomed to doing film specifically working with tax incentives. Mm -hmm. But what's great about a grant program is that we work with you throughout the entire process. So you can apply and before you actually submit your application, you can send it in to us and we'll look through it and give you feedback. Then after you apply, if you want information on why you did or did not get the grant, you can reach out to us and we'll have a workshop with you and talk about what we thought and what to improve. And then after you get it, we hook you up with mentors so that you can continue to improve your production, make sure you have all the information and resources and equipment that you need. Um, it's, a, it's a really cool program, and we help you along the way so that you don't find yourself overwhelmed. Yeah, no, that, that sounds really good. Um, is there a certain point in the production process that, like, this is like the best time to reach out to the film office if you know and get them involved with your project yeah absolutely um the best time to reach out to the film office is during pre-production and it can be as early in that process as you are comfortable reaching out to us with the earlier the better actually because even if you don't have a full production plan yet even if you're just you have a script and you have a passion and you're like I don't know what to do next. Mm -hmm. That's fine. That's actually the best time to reach out because you can say, I'm looking for the first steps in finding someone who can help me coordinate, or I'm looking for um, possible locations that I can scout and figure out um, which will work for my film. I'm looking for grants or sponsors so I can get any funding. We will help with all of that. And if we do get in early on the process to help you, then that means throughout production and then post-production and distribution, we can also be alongside to help advertise. Uh, we have a social media channel on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and we have monthly email newsletters that go out, um, not just to people in Iowa, but other people in the United States follow us as well. And if you send us behind the scenes photos or say, hey, will you advertise the screening of my film? We're always happy to share that kind of thing on social media, help you get more audience. Nice. Yeah, so I think it depends on what the filmmaker is doing. Um, you know, if it's someone local that's possibly not using the incentive, um, you know, the timing is sort of on them. Um, you know, it depends on what they're doing, I guess I should say. If they're in the pre-production stage, you know, early as possible, you know, if they're trying to secure a location, if they're trying, you know, that's, if they're trying to secure a state park, you know, we always say, you know, as early as possible, if you're trying to secure a road, um, you know, the Department of um, Transportation has their guidelines. So, um, you know, I would say the earlier, the better. Once you have your sort of ducks in a row, I know it takes time to do that, but you can inquire at any time down the road. You don't have to be ready to go to start asking us questions or start looking at our website. Um, if you are using the incentive, there are various rules that come along with that on when, you know, when you have to apply by to use the incentive. So those earmark, those benchmark dates or earmark dates are on our website, but so they have a little bit different parameters in terms of being able to use the program. And that usually kicks things off with an out-of-state production company or filmmaker because 
you know, they start looking at the website, they start seeing the dates, so they start inquiring. So most of the time they're at, you know, an early pre-production phase um, where they start asking questions. Like you, you've listed, obviously, a lot of things the film office can help uh, filmmakers with. Is there any, though, that you find that filmmakers seem to forget that you guys can help them with this? Um, I would say probably crew calls. Um, you know, they're usually, it's usually, um, you know, we offer that service um, to everybody. Um, but I don't know that it's top of mind for most filmmakers. Um when they're having trouble crewing up or even not even having trouble, just want to get things going, they sort of will go to, you know, they'll start with their, maybe their production manager or their UPM or um, their line producer, and they'll start um, using other resources, which is great. Um, But it is a really strong resource that we have available because we have a very strong reach. Um, since we're the, I'm sorry, a long reach or a big reach, um, since we are the state office, you know, we have, you know, over 10,000 subscribers on our newsletter. We have social, you know, all kinds of social media platforms. Um, and so we feel like we can get the word out very quickly and promote, you know, our website and our office as a place that you can look to find jobs. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely say that something um, we wished filmmakers asked us more to do is, is the crew calls. Yeah, I'd say um, one of what I consider our largest assets is also one that isn't always known by people. And that is that we have a crew database on our website. Um, You can go to produceiowa.com. And if you scroll down, there's a couple clickable images And one of them is for locations, one of them is for signing up to register your film, and then there's another one with the crew directory. And what's great about that is that it's actually a national software used by many different film offices throughout the United States. Um, Oklahoma would be one of them. That software is called Real Scout. And what that does is it connects all of the Iowan crew who sign up to our database into a national database as well. So somebody can search for a person in Iowa who um, does camera operating and they can find people in a certain region. Or if on smaller scale, you could have somebody in Des Moines saying, hey, I need like two PAs in the area. And then they can search for PAs by location as well. There's a lot of flexibility in it. It helps our filmmakers get noticed by producers, but it also helps producers create a production faster and more efficiently whether they're in state or out of state. Um, Especially the out of state producers like to use the crew directory though, because they don't have connections usually to Iowa beforehand. So the first thing they do is come to our office and ask, where are your crew? And we'll go, here's the link. You can search for all the people you need. Nice, yeah. I did not realize how that was connected. It's totally free as well. Um, It's free to be in the database. So it's a perk of being an Iowan and being already paying taxes yeah (laughs) one thing that to to kind of hit on is we do have a film friendly um community program um and i know texas offers something very similar i don't know um and i think there might be a few other states that offer it as offer something similar as well but basically um there are 77 um counties in oklahoma Mm -hmm. and we're working to make all of them film friendly certified So what that means is um, there's a dedicated community leader. So like in the town of Bethany, Bethany is a small town um, in between, you know, next to Oklahoma City. um, And they um, have a dedicated, you know, so towns have like a chamber or a CBB um, or a main street. And so they, this program, it, it enforces the, the town to have a leader for the film communication in that mm-hmm. community. So there's a designated film liaison, if you will. Um, they're required to meet certain parameters through the film friendly program um, with our office. So whether that's uploading locations, they have to have a permanent permit in place, and then they have to have someone designated as a film liaison. Um, and so once that's done, they become film friendly certified. 
And so we have a list of those communities on our website. Um, and with the uptick of filming um, over the last couple of years, we've had several communities come on board. So we, last year alone, we did, we had 12. Um, okay. And we have two more in the works right now. And so um, it's great to see that growth and that interest. The communities want the business of the mm. film productions um, and they recognize the importance of it and how it can really can impact their economic growth within the community. Um, and so that's been very exciting to see. Um, and that's a really big, um, it's going really well. It's a big, it's catching a lot of attention. Um, and out of that, um, I can tell you that there's been um, like the city of Bethany, they developed their own city incentive. Okay. So, you know, out of that, Bur so, so we have state incentive, but cities are able to come up with their own city incentive um, to benefit the productions even more. So if a production was coming in and they use the rebate, you know, they could shoot in Bethany and get an additional percentage back on their spend, whatever their parameters are. Mm -hmm. And I know there's a couple of other cities working on their own city incentive as well. So I think it's, it's great for the state. It's great for productions too. So um, maybe do you want to just go over how a grant works differently from the tax incentives that you usually hear filmmakers talking about? Sure. So tax incentives can be run a little bit differently depending on how each state does it. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, the rules can change from year to year. But in very basic terms, usually a tax incentive means that on the back end, after a production has come, made a movie, and spent money, then they can claim things on their taxes and not have to pay as much in taxes to the either local or sometimes federal governments. It depends on, again, what the rules are for where they are filming. Okay. Um, it's more like saving money on the back end that you don't have to spend. And again, depending on how the rules work in that area, sometimes you even get a return of tax money, just like an individual would. Mm -hmm. Versus a grant is a lot more specific, and it's on the front end rather than the back end. So if you were to get a grant, it would be for one specific project that you're working on and that you put in your application. And then we would give you a, the set amount of money that was agreed upon in that application. And you would say, I'm going to need 5000 for equipment, and here's the equipment I'm going to buy. I'm going to hire these three IONs to do these three positions on set. I'm going to pay them the standard rate of this, which would cost 10000 which means I'm going to need $15,000 um, to help me with this expense so that I can do my production and support fellow Iowans in the industry. So if that were agreed upon, and let's say that this person got the grant, then they would get that money and be able to use it on the front end. They have to keep their receipts. They have to like log books and make sure that everything is in order. But again, you're not going to be abandoned or left to figure it out on your own. We'll help you along the way and communicate with you. And then when you come to the back end, you can go, all right, here's the money I spent. Thank you. We've all cleared and we all agreed it was well used. And now your movie has been a little bit higher in production value because you had a little bit of extra to use on those resources. Nice. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, Grants are not loans as well. So, okay. you know, loans, of course, you have to pay back. You don't have to pay back a grant. The whole point is that you get the grant to use. Mm -hmm. What things should a filmmaker be considering or looking at when it comes to, like, applying for a grant to make sure they're, you know, the grant's going to be a good one for their project or it, they're going to fit what the grant's looking for? Um. There's a couple things you could do first to get extra information on what we're looking for in the grant. So the specific grant I've been talking about is the green light grant because it is specifically designed for filmmakers. But the Iowa Arts Council and even outside organizations have other grants available as well that may still apply to your project, even if they don't specifically say they're for films. It could just be a general art or project grant as well. Mm -hmm. um, with all of the ones done by the Department of Cultural Affairs, 
we will have an informational webinar that you can watch. Even if you can't attend it live, we'll have the recording so you can go watch it, listen to it, and learn how the grant works. Um, and we do it every year, even if it's uh, the same grant as last year, in case any of the fine print details have changed so that you can stay up to date. We'll also include a rubric that you can view um, on the same page with the grant and the recording of the webinar. That's so that you can look and see how we actually grade the applications. Um, it's a lot like writing an essay in school in a way, actually. Okay. You can see, okay, the more detail, the better. The more um, line items you can show in your planned budget, the better. And it's okay if you don't know everything for sure. What we're really looking for is a project that we feel um, is something that will be successful because it's been really planned well, it's a good project and there's good crew involved. We, we want to be confident that this production will actually happen and be a success all the way to the end of post-production. Um, another thing we look for is that we want it to be a project that really represents Iowa. Something that's great about the Greenlight Grants is that other states are actually watching our Greenlight grantees to see what they're doing. This is a pretty new program and it is an alternative to the tax incentives. So other states and other film commissions are watching to see how our program works. Okay. Nebraska actually now has a very similar program um, to the Greenlight Grant program. So now both of our states are able to offer these grants for our own citizens. Um, because other states are looking at these grantees who get the money and are able to make productions, we try to choose projects that will really show how great our filmmakers are and how capable we are. So that means we're not going to only choose documentaries. Mm -hmm. We will do like a documentary and a fiction piece and a horror film or something like that. Cause we're really trying to show that there is a lot of variety and talent here. Nice. Uh, so you mentioned, uh, there are a few things that, you know, the more about the details to mention on your proposal. Um, I'm just curious, are there any other ones that either you should always make sure you list, or is there any information that maybe a lot of people put on there that it's like, that's actually not that necessary? Um, absolutely, and I, I'm actually going to say the reverse. I'm going to say there's a thing that most Iowans leave out, and I'm going to encourage you to put it in, and that is Iowans usually don't bother to pay themselves okay. in their budget. And it's done with a really kind heart. It's done in such a way where they say, listen, I, I can take this for free because I want to make sure everybody else gets paid. I want to make sure I'm able to get the equipment I need so I just won't get paid for this project. It's okay. But really, you're a filmmaker. You're a professional. You should be paid for your time and your work. And part of the point of this grant is to help elevate all of the filmmakers in our state to be able to pay each other and themselves. So when you make your budget, not only should you be paying your crew a, a regular um, standard industry wage, but you should pay yourself as well. Make sure that you get credit for the own work and time that you're putting into it. Right. No, that's that's important because I've been on a lot of projects where I know that wasn't done, and I've done that on some of my own too, uh, myself. And yeah, I've done it, <laughs> and. I don't think I regret any of the times I did it, but it would be cool if I had gotten the standard wage for those instead. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure many Iowans have done it. That is for sure. Um. Um, this is especially true with the Greenlight Grant because one of the stipulations in the Greenlight Grant is that all of the money you get has to be spent back on Iowa resources. Okay. So that means you have to hire Iowa crew, pay for an Iowa location, use um, props and equipment purchased or rented in Iowa. It's supposed to go back into our own local filmmaking economy to help raise it and keep it churning out new movies. So you are perfectly welcome to hire somebody in another state, fly them in and have them be your main talent. That's great. But you'll have to pay with that with your own funding from somewhere else, not with the green light grant funds. Mm -hmm. Is there a way then like when you're filling out the proposal, let's say you are bringing either a specific cast member or DP or anything like that. in that like, you're supposed to like list that differently in your breakdown so that, 
people looking at the proposal know that's you know that's not going to be covered yeah absolutely um there isn't necessarily a set like spreadsheet to use you can form that fill that out however you like but you should make it clear in whatever way works for you that um here's my entire budget here are the things that i'm going to pay for with money i already have on hand and then here are the things over here that the green light grant would help me pay for and then there's usually also another column of things that you aren't literally handing over cash for but you're getting in kind so that would be something along the lines of my neighbor is going to act in this for free which if you're applying for the grant please do try to pay them but yeah it's understandable we do help each other we're very friendly in iowa <laughs> and um if you are having some kind of in kind working like that then you can say this would be worth this much money if you are applying for ten thousand dollars in the green light grant you have to have a portion of that yourself in cash and a portion in kind to match. Okay. So you do already have to have a little bit of money in your in your production, at least, um, at least like in writing. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people say, "Well, I don't have it yet." There is an organization in my town. They're um, just a corporation that is local, and I've spoken with them. They've agreed that they're going to give me some money towards the project, but only if I get the grant after working with you there are sometimes situations like that and that has to be discussed usually on a case-by-case basis because it depends on every what everybody is saying but um i don't remember the percentage because i think it changed since last year um i think it might be a 50 percent match but it might be a one-to-one match and there are tons of other grants that aren't just um the green light grant or aren't even through our own uh, department. There are lots of independent organizations that offer grants for artists as well. You mentioned earlier how uh, you can get feedback uh, mm-hmm. on your grant, both before you submit it and then even like after submitting it. Uh, maybe you want to just kind of like expand a little bit on that and like what, you know, what things do you try to, uh, you know, point out to filmmakers or are there maybe... I know you mentioned like filmmakers not wanting to pay themselves, uh, but are there like certain common mistakes that when you're providing that feedback, these seem to be kind of the the ones that keep popping up? I don't know that there are common mistakes, really. I, I guess in general terms, one thing you should try to avoid is not giving enough information. Okay. I would rather read way too much rather than not reading enough on what your project is and what your goals are. Um, Because even if your project isn't completely perfect, again, we're going to work with you. We will help you out with it. We'll ask questions, help find solutions to problems. Um, But if your project isn't perfect, but then you don't explain like any of the gray area, we don't know if you're even aware if there's a gray area or if you have any concerns. And it's really great if you communicate that on the front end because then we can talk with you about these concerns that you have and help find a solution. In terms of getting um, a rough draft of your application seen, we're happy to help out. Just try to give us time before the deadline. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I laugh, but sometimes people send it two days before the deadline and we usually don't have time to look. Um, If you can create a rough draft for your application, then you can send it in to us via email. Um, try to give us maybe a month, maybe even a month and a half if you can, so that we have time to look at it and get it back to you. And then you have time to do anything with our feedback before actually submitting it. Mm-hmm. You can send it in to me and I'll forward it along to our Iowa Arts Council team that looks at those. Um, my email is emily.philby at iowa.gov. So E-M-I-L-Y period P-H-I-L-B-Y at iowa.gov and I'll forward that along to the team who looks at it and can give you feedback another thing you can do is that we usually have some office hours that are held virtually okay Um, so you can sign up for a time during those hours and bring in questions and concerns you have 
We may not have time during that to go through like your entire application line by line. Mm -hmm. But if you have some concerning questions or you're just not even sure if you have the right kind of project for the grant, or maybe there's a different Iowa Arts Council grant that you think might be better, you are welcome to come to those and ask those kinds of questions because the Iowa Arts Council will be hosting those office hours. So I I want to take some time here uh, to talk kind of about the incentives, uh, especially since you've mentioned it quite a bit. Um, so maybe just take a little bit to share how the incentives work in Oklahoma to begin with. Sure. Um, so we've experienced a lot of growth um, over the last several years. Um, when I first came on board, the incentive, it's a, it's a cash rebate which is very different from um, a tax credit. Um, It is not a tax credit. It is simply a rebate. Like you bought something at Best Buy and you're mailing in your your proof that you you bought it and they send you a check back. So Mm -hmm. it's literally, um, that's kind of what it it, is. That's what it is, a cash rebate. And so um, there's not a whole lot of states that offer a cash rebate. So that makes us stick out quite a bit. Um, and over the years, I've seen the rebate go from four million a year to five million a year to eight million a year, and then now it's at thirty. Oh, wow. um, so it's so it's thirty million per fiscal year because we're um, on a fiscal calendar, and um, we the way it works is you can get anywhere from twenty to thirty eight percent back on your Oklahoma spend. So, and that pretty much includes everything done in Oklahoma. So if you're paying an Oklahoma resident, um, an Oklahoma expat, Oklahoma vendors, um, all across the board, um, you know, post-production all across the board, you can get money back on that. Um, Your percentage is based on um, what we call various uplifts. Mm -hmm. So you will get a flat out 20% um, just for making your movie here. Um, there are parameters. Um, you have to have a $50,000 budget. Um, 25 of that has to be spent in state. Um, but other than that, that's, that's the base is 20%. You can get an uptick for um, filming on a soundstage. You can get an uptick for shooting in a rural uh, municipality, an uptick for shooting in a rural community, um, an uptick for doing post-production here an uptick for being a TV series or TV pilot, and an uptick for being a multi-film deal, which is a new concept for us. Um, It basically means that you are saying you're going to do three films over three years. Um, And so it's kind of, it was was an effort for that long-term business commitment that, you know, that business would keep that production company or the people associated with that company would keep coming back to provide more work to crew basically. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's kind of the high level, um, you know, part of it. There are various, um, you know, documents that are due or, you know, you can't, you can't be, um, you know, a TV series, a TV season and a multi-film deal. There's some little nuances in there but at the end of the day it's anywhere from 20 to 38 percent okay um and so you kind of touched on this in the sense that oklahoma does a cash rebate as opposed to like tax incentives but are there any other differences between how oklahoma runs their incentives as opposed to you know maybe georgia or california or some of the other states Um, You know, I can't speak to the processes of some of the other states. Um, I will tell you every state is different. There's around, I want to say 40-ish states that offer incentives, and every single one is different in some way. You know, every office falls under a different jurisdiction. Some are tourism, some are economic development, some are with the governor's office. Um, It's just sort of every state does their own thing and um, every, you know, what they qualify, they're somewhat similar in the fact that, you know, they're doing BTL um, wages, you know, they're doing resident wages and, and then they're doing spend, local spend. But there are some 
change, there are some differences in like if the spend is capped or if the, um, if you have to hire so many residents, like does this mm-hmm. have to be 30% residents? Um, their ATL varies from state to state on how much they qualify and what they won't qualify. Is it resident? Is it non-resident? Um, you know, all the minimum budgets are the same. Some of the projects are capped, you know, it can't be over a million dollar project. You're capped at that depending on the incentive. And so they're all so different, um, that you really have to go through and read about all of them to see which one maximizes your, your film or your benefit, you know, when you're trying to, um, make it have it, make a film or secure financing, you know, all those types of things. Um, and so I would say that there's, there's not one like ours. <laughs> um, and um, there's probably not one that's even like, you know, now with our various upticks, um, there's probably really not one similar to ours, but um, they're so different. Um, you know, it just depends on the state's legislation and how they feel about, you know, filming in the state and its economic benefits. So, what are some things? filmmakers should be considering when deciding if Oklahoma is maybe a good state to apply for an incentive for their project? So um, I think most of the things that I hear in talking to potential clients is, you know, they're considering Oklahoma for one of three reasons. Um, It was referred to them. Um, They know somebody that film there and they had a great experience. And so they're looking at Oklahoma. So then they start looking at the incentives more in depth and that it catches their eye. And, you know, then they want to talk, they want to, they want more information. Um, the script is, is it's scripted for Oklahoma. We get that a lot. Um, you know, that's meant, it's a story here. It's meant to happen here. Um, another state doesn't have available funding or, um, you know, something just didn't work out with that state. So obviously we're in Oklahoma. We can look a lot like Texas <laughs> in parts of the state. So, you know, we'll hear that, you know, I, I can't go to Texas right now. This, could, this, this script could be done in Oklahoma. Um, so we hear that a lot. Um, we have location, like we have 12 eco regions. So a okay. lot of people don't, a lot of people don't know that. So we find that you can almost do anything here. Mm -hmm. Um, Literally, I mean, we have a desert here um, that's been utilized multiple times. So people don't realize that. And so once they make one movie, then they'll come back and they'll make another one because they they realize the resources. Um, Really talented and devoted crew um, in Oklahoma. We get lots of compliments on our crew okay um and how the hospitality was wonderful um just being a really hard worker wanting to learn um and so we're it's always great to hear um and hospitality in general in Oklahoma we hear that a lot where um you know you might be shooting in a neighborhood and the neighborhood's on board and they understand the process. They, they're excited about it. They understand the process. Um, and we'll hear a lot that, you know, well, if I shoot, you know, in LA, people are yelling at me because <laughs> they want me off their lawn or, or mm-hmm. whatever. It doesn't matter what you pay them. They just don't want me there. And so we get a lot of compliments on um, hospitality in general, um, how welcoming the state is when it comes to film production. Okay. So I have to ask, because I didn't realize uh, Oklahoma has so many eco regions. Like, what are, you, you mentioned a desert, but what are some of the other ones? Um, Oh, boy, now you're going to really test me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to go to the website. <laughs> um, So there's, obviously, there's desert. We do have, um, so like waterfall, there is a waterfall here. Okay. We have more bodies of water than anywhere else. So we have a lot of lakes, mm-hmm. basically. Um, so you could actually do a lake scene or make it look like an ocean, maybe, you know, if, if you needed that type of look. There's central Oklahoma, which is known as Frontier County. 
Um, so it's going to be uh, more hill country, uh, short, short grass, like prairie grass, mm -hmm. um, more in the heart of Oklahoma. Um, there's going to be the Northeast. So that's going to be like green country. So it's very green there and they have more expansive, expansive lakes and tall grass berries and rolling green hills. Um, then there's going to be Northwest, which is going to be red carpet country. So it's going to be more, um, rugged beauty is how it's described. Um, sand dunes, that's going to be the sand part I was talking about. Um, gyps, there's a lot of, um, state parks. So there's like, we have a vast plain of salt and gypsum, gypsum caves. Okay. <laughs> so we've got a lot of caves. We've had actually a film that did, um, that filmed in a cave. Um, mountains, we have Arbuckle Mountains. Mountains is used loosely. Um, so we're definitely not like Colorado, but um, so that also has mineral springs and waterfalls and forest. Um, and then there's going to be um, the Southeast Oklahoma is going to be more um, sparkling lakes, mountains, bayous, and Southwest has wheat and cotton. So those are kind of the regions within yeah. those. There is a dedicated like 12 eco region list. But I don't have that for me. So jumping uh, kind of back to incentives, are there common misunderstandings maybe you see filmmakers have about how y your incentive works? Let's see. Um, that it will, for our office specifically, that it will take, um, that the payout time is a long time. Um, that's probably the most common okay. misconception. Um, we have a very quick turnaround. Um, so it's after, once the CPA audit is done, it's 60 days um, for payout. Um, with, in, um, when that's us partnering with the Oklahoma Tax Commission to mm -hmm. get the clients their rebate. So people are always super surprised about about that timeline for oklahoma at least uh what's the like application process like for the incentives so it's all online um it's an online application which um i will say i don't think all the film offices are online yet that way it okay. really helps streamline things um it is an online application um, you can apply at any time. Um, so I should say you can apply at any time. Um, but the minimum is 45 days before your shoot date. Okay. But if you want to apply six months before your um, shoot date, you can do that as well. Um, we do have quarterly, um, sort of application periods right now that's new for our office. So basically right now, applications are being accepted for quarter four. Um, and that has to be, that's due to our office by February 15th. Um, and so you could have applied, you know, last August <laughs> mm -hmm. to shoot in May, that would have been fine. That would have been okay to do, but the minimum is 45 days on top of meeting those quarterly application um, windows. So have just a couple more uh, questions for you. Um, first one is what's one piece of advice you'd give to a filmmaker about working with the film office? Contact us early. You know, we're always open to hear about new productions interested in Oklahoma. Um, we love to put you on our radar. Um, for sure. Um, and I only say that because that allows us to, you know, if you have a location request, it allows us to do research on that, put mm -hmm. a location package together. Um, have your questions ready. You know, um, we're happy, we're happy, we explain it, you know, till we're blue in the face when we talk about the, the incentive <laughs> and how it works and what qualifies and what doesn't qualify. And, um, you know, I think just, and a lot of people do, they have questions ready for us, which is really helpful. Uh, I'd say the best thing you could do to work with our office is just to email us. You can email Liz, you can email me. 
Um, or you can even email just the Department of Cultural Affairs um, in general, and those emails will eventually come to us. We're here to help. We read every single email, and we'll do our best to reply to you in a timely manner. And if we don't have an exact answer for your question, we should at least be able to connect you with resources that will have an answer for you so that you're not just left completely clueless at the end. Sounds good. Um... There are no dumb questions. (laughs) There aren't. (laughs) It's okay. You can email and go, I don't even know my password for logging into the crew directory. Can you help me? Um, That happens a lot, actually. So I'm happy to help with that. And sometimes people also email and they're like, I don't know how much to pay people. What is the industry standard? Mm -hmm. You know, or can you tell me there was a film filmed in Iowa in 1965 and it had a guy with shaggy blonde hair. Do you know what film that is? And we'll at least try to help you track it down. It's, it's wonderful seeing the kinds of things that pop up in your inbox. (laughs) I bet. Yeah, no, that's good. And yeah, I've, I've definitely been one of those people that sits there like, is this a dumb question that? <laughs> no, absolutely not. There are no dumb questions. We, even though we are part of the government, which sometimes can feel a little like separate from everyday life, mm-hmm. um, I promise we're actual humans on the other side, <laughs> for one thing. But we also, uh, <laughs> we also are really big film nerds. Okay. And because we are sister divisions with the State Historical Society of Iowa, there's a lot of history of film that we like to look at. Um, that we keep track of an official Iowa filmography that is on our website, and we're always trying to add to it and keep up to date. So there's we could talk about film for hours. <laughs> <laughs> there's no dumb questions. All right. Yeah. Um, so then I guess I also just wanted to give you kind of moment here to maybe plug one more time where people can find Produce Iowa online. You can go to produceiowa.com, P-R-O-D-U-C-E-I-O-W-A.com, or you can go to iowaculture.gov, which is for the entire Department of Cultural Affairs, and you'll find us under the tab of film slash media. There is contact information for Liz and myself on the website, but I will also give you my email here. It's Emily period Philby at Iowa.gov. So then where can people go to find the Oklahoma Film Office like online and get in touch with you? Sure. So again, my name is Jeanette Stanton and I'm the deputy director of the Film and Music Office. And you can find everything you need to know about our office on our website which is okfilmmusic.org. And with that, we're going to wrap up this episode of The Producer Podcast. Thank you, EJ and Jeanette, for coming on today and sharing with us about your film offices and how they can benefit people's film productions. Thank you so much for having, for having me and for representing um, the Film and Music Office. This was fun. I'm really glad that you reached out. Thank you for having me. Yeah, not a problem. Until next time, make sure to subscribe to The Producer Podcast, and thanks for listening.